Hey guys, Cooper Carter here for Fractal Audio Systems, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to capture an impulse response, or IR, of your own guitar cabinet, and save that impulse response into the AxeFX 2 to use in your cabinet block. We're here at Down and Deep Studios in Atlanta, Georgia. The benefit to being in a recording studio is that we have a live room where we can turn up and mic our cabinet, and we have a control room where we can listen to the mic'd tone isolated from the sound of the cabinet itself. If you don't have access to a recording studio, you can still capture a great IR, as long as you have a quiet room where you can mic up your cabinet. In this tutorial, we're gonna be using a DI load box to factor out the tonal colorations of your power amplifier from the impulse response of the cabinet itself. This means that you can use almost any power amp, including a guitar amplifier. A neutral solid state power amplifier isn't necessary if you use this DI method. To capture the IR, you'll need a microphone and a microphone preamp. In this case, we're using a really nice API preamp, but if you don't have access to that kind of high-end gear, you can use almost any microphone pre, including the preamp on an inexpensive home mixer. Connect the microphone to the input of the preamp. Play through the amplifier and set the preamp's input trim and gain optimally. Now connect the output of the preamp to the input to left effects return of the AxeFX 2. Connect output to left FX send of the AxeFX 2 to the effects return of your guitar amplifier. If your amp doesn't have an effects return, you can use the guitar input where you'd normally plug your guitar in. Setting your amp to a clean setting is recommended, but again, since we're removing the amp's coloration with the DI load box, it's not critical to have a clean tone. Connect the amplifier's speaker output to the speaker level input of the DI box. Be sure to use a DI box that is specifically designed to work with speaker level signals and one that does not have any onboard cabinet emulation. You can also use the DI output of your amp if it has one, as long as it doesn't have cabinet simulation. Connect the speaker out or through of the DI box to your speaker. Now connect the line level output of the DI box to input to right on the AxeFX 2. Now on the global config page of the AxeFX 2, we're gonna set IR capture method to mic plus DI. We're also gonna make sure that the IR type is set to ultra res. On the input output audio screen, set input to mode to stereo. Now we're gonna mic the speaker. This is the part of the process where it really helps to have a separate isolated control room and a live room for the cab. It also helps if you have someone else with you so that they can move the microphone to position it where you want on the cabinet while you're listening to the microphone tone in the control room. The tone you're gonna be getting from a mic speaker can vary drastically depending on where you have the microphone positioned on the speaker and even which speaker in, for example, a 4x12 cabinet you have the mic on. Very, very small adjustments can make a huge difference in your tone. and You can get a lot of different IRs just from small movements of the microphone. We're gonna be using the Cab Lab 3 capture utility from Fractal Audio Systems to shoot the IR itself. Connect your computer to the AxeFX 2 via USB. Launch Cab Lab and start the IR capture utility. First, we're gonna test the levels of our system to make sure that we're getting an optimal signal to noise ratio for the IR capture. You're gonna hear a sine wave sweep through the speaker. If you're getting too much signal into the AxeFX, turn down output two on the front panel of your AxeFX. If required, you can further adjust input two levels on the input page of the input output menu of the AxeFX. Now using Cab Lab, let's hit capture and capture our IR. Once the IR has been captured, it will automatically load into the scratch pad 1 slot in our cabinet block for auditioning. Keep in mind though, the scratch pad is a temporary slot that will rewrite with each new IR. If you like a sound, make sure to then save the IR into a user cap slot or to file for future use. Now that we've captured our IR, let's check it for accuracy against our mic'd cabinet sound. As you can hear, the two tones are identical. Now that we've captured this first IR, you're all set up to continue capturing IRs. You can simply move the microphone a little bit on this cabinet to get a different tone, or you can even switch microphones and cabinets entirely and repeat the capture process. That's all there is to it. Hey. 